Hi everyone, David here from DavidDumeAudio.com and in this video I'll be doing my review of Soundweaver by Boom Library. Now if at any point in this video you want to know more about the product, I'll leave a link in the description below which will take you right to the product page so you guys can have a look at it and learn more about it. Now for this video I actually want to do um, three things. I want to first go over the software, uh, the different parts of it and how it works. And then number two, I want to maybe show you guys an example or two of actually using it. And then finally finish off with the pros, the cons, and my final thoughts about the software. And yeah, and that's pretty much it. So let's get started with the video. All right, so this is Soundweaver. And so I've loaded a, a patch that I've made before, but before we actually listen to what it is and, and what it can do, uh, I just want to go over the layout here so you guys have an idea of, of how it works. All right, so... Uh, let's start at the top here. Of course, you have your menu up here. Uh, we'll go into more detail uh, with these a little later. Uh, first thing uh, we'll look at is the main board here. So here we see we have uh, four different groups. So here I have uh, the magic group. Down here I have tonal pass by group. Down here I have whooshes, a whoosh group. And down here I have a kick group. So we have four different groups. And these are like tracks inside of your DAW. And I, I kind of like to think of Sandweaver as, as a kind of like a mini DAW, if you will, um, just for sound effects. I mean, it's lacking a lot of the features that a full uh, DAW would have, but it's kind of like how I like to think about it. So here we have a, a track, two tracks here inside of my magic spells. And uh, so you have all the settings here. So you, you have your mute, your solo. You can lock the track so that if you ever randomize parameters, this track will be locked and will not be affected. Um, here you can move variations to right and left. Here I don't have any variations after this track, but down here I do. So for example, here this whoosh, if I wanted to, I can move variations to right or left like this. Or I could also randomize them like this and it'll pick a random one. Um, and yeah, so then you also have your pitch. So you can change the pitch of the sample file just by dragging up and down. Here you have the gain and the pan, so you can pan right and le left to right. And what I really like about it is that you can double click on, on these, um, I don't know, faders, whatever these are, and it'll reset it to its default position. That's really nice. And you also have this dice arrow, which will randomize the samples. And the way that it works is that when you're loading in a sample, you actually choose a file path, so a folder, which has which houses all your samples. So let's say in this folder here that I chose, I have 100 samples of magic sounds, but I said I only want two layers, so I only have two tracks of these. Well, it's, it's going to pick only one sample from those tracks, but when I press the randomize button, it's going to choose a different sample within that folder. Uh, but we'll look again into more detail so you guys have a better understanding of that. Keywords, we'll also check that out later, but basically you can choose keywords um, so that it chooses only the samples that have the keywords or that that don't have the keywords that you put in. And again, we'll look at that when uh, I actually show an example, it'll be a lot clearer. But basically, this is the overview of it. So this, here are the parameters or, yeah, the parameters for, for this individual sound effect. You also have group parameters up here, which are the exact same as the individual, individual track parameters. So you have, you know, solo mute lock uh, variation. So you can switch the whole group uh, if they had variations. I don't, but if, if you did, you could do that. Uh, you can randomize all the samples within the group. Again, the gain with for the group, you can change it and then reset it if you want. Uh, pitch again, you just drag up and down. Uh, here, we have the randomizing the pitch for the group. Here, you have the randomizing the uh, position, so where it lines up with the hit point. You can change the hit point like this, and I can press reset, and then it'll bring it back to where it was. Um, yeah, so that's what this does, and then the reset resets the position. And like I said, here, I have two layers. If I want to add more, I just drag up and down, and suddenly it's going to search for more, and then it's already populated it and puts it in, but I just want two, so I'm going to leave it like that. And we already went over the keywords, the path, and then the delete is just to delete the entire group here. And that's basically a quick overview of groups here and the tracks. So this is your main window where you're going to be working, you know, most of the time. Now, what's really great about this is um, as you're working, you can create snapshots. So um, it'll automatically load uh, sounds into your groups here. And then what you can do is you can have snapshots. So to have a snapshot, you just click the plus sign here and then it'll create a new snapshot. So let's say I randomize my sounds. I get a new sound here. If I wanted to, I create I create plus as a new snapshot at the bottom and here it is. All right, next we have this little uh, eye icon here and this lets you change the name of the snapshot so you can name it whatever you want. And here, this uh, reset uh, icon is let's say um, I save something at, at, at snapshot 30 um, but I don't really like it so let's say next time I randomize the sound oh I really like this sound well now I can press this uh, reset button and it's going to reset it on the snapshot that I'm on so let's say I'm on number 30 
and I click randomize. Oh, I like this new sound. If I click reset, now it's going to be saved on 30 and it's going to overwrite the previous one. And of course, the garbage can here is just going to delete your snapshot. All right, the next section we have here is export down here, this little square. And this is pretty cool and it's really powerful. So you have three different options for exporting. You can export a mix down, which is like all the files mixed down together. You can export groups. So you can have um, all the groups mixed down together. So like I could have my magic group mixed together, tone pass bias mixed together, whooshes mixed together, and kicks mixed together. Or I can have each individual individual tracks exported. And once you choose the one you want, you have even more options. So uh, let's say I chose mix down, so I just want everything mixed down together. I can choose random variations. So what that's going to do is, uh, based on these random variations, so for example, not all the tracks that I have set up here have random variations, but here, for example, this sweetener, this uh, whoosh here, it has a lot of different variations. So let's say like all of these variations I could use. Well, when I press export and I say random variations, it's going to uh, randomly choose... Uh, these variations, and then I can choose, well, let's say I want five or six variations. It's going to choose six different ones, and then it's going to export it. So this can be really powerful if every track had variations, because as you can see right now, I only have three tracks that do that. So if I did, for this specific sound effect, if I did random variation, it would only change the sound for these three tracks and give five variations for these three tracks. So the sound wouldn't change too much, but... Um, yeah, you would get five different sound effects for that. Again, it can be really powerful if every track had variations on it because then you can create just uh, a lot of variations from your sound effects. Um, the next option here for mix down, so let's say I had a mix down of all my sounds here, I can choose snapshots. So what it's going to do, it's going to do a mix down of all my snapshots here. So I'm going to get 30, 30 uh, sound files exported into a folder, basically. And then finally, it's just current variation, which is just going to do um, just this one sound effect that I'm on right now. So this current snapshot, which is number 30. And it's just going to be one file exported. Now, you can imagine how powerful this can be if you have, for example, tracks, and I choose, you know, snapshots. So now what it's going to do is for these 30 snapshots, I'm going to get however many tracks this is. Like, I don't know, what is this? 10, whatever. So let's say I have 10 tracks here per snapshot. So I'm going to get, you know, 300 audio files exported into my folder that I can then use and import into my uh, a session in my DAW if I wanted to further, you know, manipulate them and do whatever with them. So that can be really powerful here. Another thing that's nice is for the mix down that I like to use here is you can click prepare for drag and drop. You just click the button and then now it's ready. So now you can just click this uh, this icon here and you can just drag it and drop it directly into your DAW. And um, yeah, it'll go right into your file. And actually, I'm going to show you guys that right now. All right, so here we are in my session. I opened a new session inside of Nuendo here. So I can just click prepare for drag and drop. Here we go. And now I just click on this icon here and I can just put it directly into my project. And ma'am, there's my sound. Now let's say I wanted to have... Um, let's say I want to have my groups current variation so I can click prepare for drag and drop so now I'm going to get four groups and I can just drag it and drop it in here so I'm going to do different tracks bam and there is my sound all four groups mixed together and then I can just add whatever effects if I wanted to or further uh, manipulate it or do whatever with the sound effects so it's really powerful because you can just quickly drag and drop stuff and keep working on it all right, so to finish off the export here, we have a f uh, three more uh, properties, uh, three more parameters here. So we can click overwrite. So this is going to uh, overwrite the previous sounds that you might have exported. Uh, so you have to make sure you know about that. Uh, randomize the pitch. So this is uh, when you're going to export, it's going to randomize the obviously all the pitch of uh, every layer. And you can also randomize the position, like I said here, the hit point, the position here. All right, down here at the bottom right, we have the um, transport. So you just play stop. And this here is to whenever you play it, press play. Um, it's gonna, if, if you turn it off, it's gonna, and you press play again, it's just gonna st start the sound wherever the uh, transport is. But if you have it clicked, it's gonna restart the, the sound wherever you first press play. So if I press play, it's gonna reset it here. And if I turn it off, the transport stays at the end of the sound here. All right, finally down here, we have the master uh, parameters here. So I have the randomize. This is going to randomize all the samples, just like that. So I have a new sound every time. Down here, you have variations. 
So you can go through variations one at a time. Right now, I only have these two that have variations. You can also click shuffle variations. Just going to pick randomly between variations. Of course, you have your master output, your position. So this is the where the hit points line up. So right now, everything's lined up at the at the transient. I can do, let's say, make it really obvious. Make it a lot. Now you can see everything moving a bit. Fit plus or minus 51 milliseconds off of the hit point. And of course, you can do the pitch here. So let's say I click randomize. You'll see all the track pitches here. They're all going to change. And that's what that is. And finally, over here, you have the global pitch. So you can uh, turn the pitch up and down of the entire sound effect here. And that's basically it for the over, like the layout of, these, uh, uh, of the software. So finally, up here, you have your menu. So you can click New to get a new open recent projects. I really like this tab because then you can see everything you've been working on from before and you can quickly open it. Um, you know, save, save as. Export audio. So this is like your export uh, down here, but you have it as an as an additional file here. So if you want to export it out to a folder, you have all, all the same settings over here uh, that you can play with. Uh, uh, prepare for drag and drop. This is the same as the drag and drop down here. Uh, you can undo, redo, randomize, selected tracks. So these are all things that are already um, found on the uh, on the group tracks and stuff. It's just other menu items. There was a few things I wanted to show, which one was, if you want to create a new group, you can go up here to create a new group. So if I wanted to add a new one, now it's going to add me a new one at the very bottom down here that I didn't have before. So that's one way you can add a new group. If Let's say if you miss one. You can also add sounds manually, just drag and drop. You can also just drag and drop sounds. Like if you open a folder, you can just drag it and drop directly into the project and it'll automatically create a new group. So that's also really nice. And snapshot, you can create a snapshot by just clicking that. So what's really great about this is you can have a lot of shortcuts uh, that come with the software and you can pre-program them the way you want. So that's really powerful as well, especially if you have something like a stream deck or some sort of macro keyboard, then you can play with that. And paths. I'll go over paths really sh shortly. Then you have view help and about sound weaver. So that's basically it for the overview of the software. So now what I want to do is actually just go in and start uh, a brand new patch, a brand new sound and, and do that from scratch. So let's work with this. So I'm going to just do a magic sound here and just create the project. Don't save. No. Okay. So here's where you can choose how many groups you want. So let's say I want to have, you know, I'll say I want three groups. So starting here, you can say keywords. Um, this is going to choose keywords uh, that you want to pick out from the folder that you have. So let's pick a folder first here. So I already have folders, uh, paths that are already created. So this is Soundweaver has already searched these folders and already knows where they are and sounds that are in them. So let's say I want um, kicks because that will be the transient of my sound effect, let's say. Like on here in my keywords, I can put, you know, only have the sounds that have kicks or only s sounds that have, you know, like glow or something. You can pick only certain keywords from it. Uh, personally, I found that this did not always work really well. And it only ever worked if it's actually part of the keywords metadata, not actually in the a sound file name. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I tend to leave mine just blank and, and leave it as is. Here you can see, see exclude keywords. So if you don't want certain sounds, you can type it out here. And then layers. So that's pretty much it for the group. So I'm going to do the same thing here for these two other groups, except I'm going to choose different paths. So I'm going to choose spells, and then I'm going to choose something like whooshes or something like that. I think I have one. Which is here we go. And then once you're ready to go, all you press is randomize and it's going to set it up for you. And there's your sound effect. So now you're ready to just have a listen. So what's a little annoying here is that, as you can see here, it didn't detect the chains the change in uh, transient here for my, for my sound effects. So there's a change of sound effect. But what you can do is you can just right click and then click split region and it'll you can manually split the regions like this. So now it's set up. And like I said before, you can just click plus one for the snapshot. Now that snapshot is saved. So, so hopefully you get an idea of like how quickly you can create some some cool sound effects like this. And there you have it. So if at any point you want to change the keywords for individual groups, you can do it here. Let's say, so I didn't put any keywords for any of the groups. So let's say I just wanted to have something like... Uh, 
something the keywords with kick. Well, then it's only going to pick sounds that have the words, the keywords kick in it. So, um, and then you can add as many as you want. And, but yeah, so I'd normally leave it and there you go. So path, let's say you want a different, different samples or different sounds. You can just go here and you can have multiple paths for them. So let's say I wanted something like junk here. So now it'll pick from these two uh, folders. And I could do that, but I'm just going to leave it as is. And like I said before, too, if you want to add like uh, other folders, you can add a lot of, a lot of layers here. So, um, yeah, and it's really easy to just fix that up like that. All right, so now I kind of want to go over the um, the pros and cons of the software. So there's a lot of really powerful things about it, as you can obviously see. Uh, but the first thing is that the randomization, the fact that you can just randomize everything, uh, like samples here, and just lines it up on the hit point automatically is just super powerful. You can work really quickly with that. Um, so yeah, you can. It, it's just really powerful. And then just randomizing the position, randomizing the pitch, is is just super easy to do, and it just works. So if I play it this. And I, let's say I randomize the pitch again. So as you can hear, you're getting a lot of different uh, variations on the sound just by ran randomizing the pitch. So it's super powerful, especially if you're working in video games and you just need a lot of variation on sounds. Like th It just works, and it's just really quick. So um, that's one thing that's super powerful. The next thing is that... Uh, I already touched on this. It has programmable shortcuts, which is always really nice because, uh, like I said, if, if, if you're just working with your keyboard, you can just really quickly uh, you know, learn whatever um, shortcuts in here or you can assign them to something like a Stream Deck. And, uh, yeah, it just makes your workflow a lot faster. All right, other things I really like about this software, kind of touched on it already, randomization, uh, uh, global parameters, which are really nice, especially for the groups and uh, individual tracks. So the fact that you have the same uh, control over everything, uh, groups, tracks, and global, is just makes everything super easy to use. Um, the snapshot features is super powerful, especially the export, that you can just export um, variations and random variations and, and choose how many, uh, however many of stuff that you want, however many variations that you want is super powerful. All right, so there's a few things that I do want to touch on that I think could really um, use some improvements. Um, the first thing that I found was really annoying is this um, uh, locators up here. So here you have your locators to play the sound. If you double click on it, it'll loop. So right now, uh, like right now, it's grayed off, so it won't loop. And if I double click on it, it'll uh, light up, and now it'll loop the sound. So if I play it. So that's cool, that's great, um, works great. But the thing is, is let's say I add that as a snapshot. So I have my snapshot here. Let's say I randomize my sound. I get a new sound here, and let's say I wanna put my locators like this or something like that. Let's say that works for that, that, that sound effect or even, you know, I want it like this, okay? So that, that's this snapshot. Well, when I go back to my snapshot number four, it doesn't change the locators to what it what I had it for this snapshot. So like every time you change, the parameters is different for each sound effect. But like this sound effect, I don't need the parameters to be all the way out here. I only need it to be like, you know, right here like that. So it's really annoying that, it, that you have to keep on switching the locators up here just to fit the sound effect. So whenever you're switching between snapshots, that can be really annoying and it can be a bit time consuming. So I, I, I hope they come out with a, uh, a patch or something to fix this up. Another thing that I really want to see is a uh, reset, uh, a global parameter reset. So what I'm talking about here is uh, pitch randomization. So let's say I randomize all my samples here like this. As you can see, everything's changed from 100% and like that. Okay, so now everything's different, right? Well, there's no way for me to reset the pitch of individual tracks here. So I really wish that they had like a button here where you can just reset the pitch of every track and everything goes back to 100%. So right now, if I wanted to switch everything back, I have to go individually into every track and click 100%. As far as I'm aware, there's no button to like do that. I might be wrong, but from what I've seen from what I've been using, I have to go through into every track, double click, type 100% to reset everything, which is really annoying. Same thing with the um, uh, randomized position. If I want to reset it, so let's say I do like this. Now you can see everything's not lined up anymore. So the quickest way I can do to like reset the position back so that everything's lined up, all the hit points are lined up, is to go into the groups and click reset position like this. And now everything's reset. Well, I, I, like I would really like to see another button like right beside here that you can just click and reset all the groups to the hit points, uh, to their default hit point position. So um, yeah, those are two of the things that are a bit annoying and, and could really save a lot of time. 
Another thing I would like to see is uh, mute unmute. So what you can do uh, when you're working, let's say you just want to hear a, a, a group here, you can do that. So that's fine. If you want to hear another group, you'll notice that this the, the solo changes. So that's also fine. If you hold shift, you can actually solo multiple group, groups. But there's no quick way to like un, un, unmute or unsolo groups. So uh, let's say I had like these groups soloed and if I had like one or two other groups soloed, there's no way for me to unmute them. What I'd have to do is like click on another group solo and then click again. So like it's it's okay, but uh, it'd be nice if they just had a, uh, a global like uh, solo, or solo and mute button so that you can just click on it and then it unmutes all the tracks or solos uh, all the tracks. Um, kind of like you have inside of Nuendo or Cubase. Another thing that I think could be improved on is these um, randomized controls here. So unless you're you're getting really familiar with the software, um, these are really not clear exactly what they do. And I was pretty confused at first. I was like, why is this a note and why is this a, a, a clock here? I mean, eventually I, I realized, oh, it's just to fix the position and this is for the pitch. Uh, but I think it could be a bit more clear uh, on what they do here. And another thing to speed up workflow um, is the zoom function. So if you press control and then you scroll with your mouse, you can zoom in and out, which is great. That works fine. But let's say, you know, I'm zooming in on something and I want to move this over here or something like that. And I can move individual tracks like this. That's fine. But then if I, I, there's no way for me to like move to the side unless I'm like grabbing down here and move to the side. So I wish they had like something where you can like click the scroll of the mouse and then just go like right or left. So it's really annoying because I really want to do that, but I can't do that. The only way that I figured out how to do is just press control and scroll. So it'd be nice if they had another uh, quick way to scroll left and right. Um, yeah. And finally, the last thing I would really love to see uh, in terms of this software um, is to be able to minimize groups. So especially when you're working with a group, and let's say, I mean, I'm exaggerating here, you know, I have 12 layers, but let's say I'm like, okay, I, I like this I like this group, um, but I want to work on other groups, or I want to see what other groups sound differently. Like, it'd be nice to just, like, minimize this, and then everything gets, uh, you know, minimized into a, a little group, and then I can have just these on my window with the, with the minimized, you know, group up here. So right now, there's, as far as I know, there's no way to minimize groups. So if you have something with a lot of layers, and you can put a lot of layers, so I can go up to like, you know, 66. Well, now, now you can start to see the problem. Let's say I have this. Well, now I have to scroll all the way down just to go and find my other groups. So it'd be really nice to just have a little button here. You can click, minimize the group, and then and you can work with your other sounds. Okay, with all of that said, though, um, what are my thoughts with this software? Um, I really, really like it. I'm really glad I got it. It's it's super valuable. Um, a few things you need to know about it, though. You, you, it doesn't come with any sound effects. So this is only, um, you have to import your own sound effects into it, uh, which is fine. Probably for most sound designers, you know, you'll kind of want that. But just so you're aware of it. Um, also, it's just, it's really good for uh, repurposing your sound design that you've already created. So, um, you know, I have some sound packs that I've created for myself. I just imported them into here and then suddenly I have new sounds that I've, I've never heard or done before that are super useful and that I can use in new projects. So it's really powerful that for that. It's, it just saves a lot of time, just especially with a randomized button. You just, you don't have to put all the work into lining everything up and making everything sound good. It's just, it just, you import it and it works. So super powerful. I kind of like to, Think of this as uh, a, a companion to S layer, just because I use S layer a lot. And this is not the same because this you can. I, I, I like how it, it splits sounds up into groups because now what I can do is I can actually layer, um, like intentionally layer sound effects. So let's say I want a, a more complex sound, I can intentionally put in, for example, an explosion sound. I can intentionally put in, you know, like kicks to add sub or punch. I can in uh, intentionally put in like an explosion layer. I can intentionally put in, you know, glass and then a debris, a debris group, and then maybe something else, you know. So I can intentionally like craft a sound, even though it's going to be randomized, but you can make it intentional and, and sound, uh, sound better that way. But S layer, you kind of never know what you're going to get and you're kind of stuck with whatever uh, eight sound effects that you're working together. So uh, I think they really complement each other super well. But uh, overall, I think this is super useful as a sound designer, especially if you're working on TED deadlines. I, I definitely recommend it. It's super powerful. Again, a few things that I would love to see tweaked and, and uh, see fixed in future updates. But overall, this gets my recommendation 100%. All right, so for $215, is it worth it? Um, I think it depends on your situation, but basically if you are doing uh, sound design for video games or for movies or for... Uh, 
or anything else like you want to expand your own sound libraries, I think, yes, it's definitely worth it. Um, it's just so powerful and you can quickly go through variations and randomize, randomizing your own sound. So it's really powerful for that. Um, you know, who it's not for, I guess, anybody who's not doing sound design, I think, um, like I said, this is one of my top three tools now. So I really recommend it and it's, it's really powerful. So anybody who's doing sound design, I would say, um, yeah, you should definitely look at it. All right, so I think that's it for this video. Uh, let me know what you guys thought. Uh, do you use Soundweaver? Are you going to use it? Are you going to try it? There's a seven-day free trial on their website, so check it out. Also, if you want to know more information, I'll leave a link in the description uh, to g uh, bring you to the uh, Soundweaver page. Also, um, I'm going to include some free uh, sound effects that I've created using Soundweaver. So check the link in the description for that. I'll probably have like something like 20, 25 free sound effects for you guys to use royalty-free um, in whatever project or way you want to use it. So uh, check that down in the description. I think that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.